Hey everyone, welcome back to the RK Garage. Thanks for joining us. We are now gonna go and touch base on uh, your mid arm versus your long arm, why you would upgrade, when you would upgrade, yep. right? So uh, we've now covered the suspension lift, we've got our Components. spring lift, we've got our coilovers on maybe, we've yep. got, you know, we've got all that on. Um, and your, we have our adjustable arms, and this is something I've been running, an adjustable arm to get my, yep. get my caster back and um, make sure my axle length so my, my wheelbase stays where it needs to be. Um, but there's some limitations at a certain point or as you get into it. So we have on the table, we have a, our, our mid arm, which yep. is a factory replacement adjustable mid arm. And then now we are looking at a long arm next to it, which is quite, a bit longer. Yep. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so what are some, what are, let's go over pros and cons. So what are uh, some pros of going to a long arm from your factory mid arm? Well, for, for a pro, I mean, now the consumer can choose from multiple geometry um, configurations offered by the aftermarket. You okay. know, you have some people that run radius arm front ends, if, if you like those, or four link front ends, or independent. My Land Cruiser front. had, radi had radius, yep, had radius arms, arms stock. Factory, right? Old school Broncos came with radius arms. That was a very common geometry way back in the day. Mm. Um, they also, you know, every, every configuration has a plus and minus. You know, so when you get there, you know, you have to choose what, what do you want to do and what do you feel comfortable with your vehicle. Same thing, everything else that we're addressing in the 101 all relates to what you pick when you go, if, if and when you go long arm. Right, so going long arm gives you a lot more adjustability, be like changing to a three link, going to a tri triangulated four link, yep. and we have all that in the advanced course if, you, if you're not really familiar with them. We'll touch base on those things right now yep. just to kind of let you know, but it really just opens up the way the Jeep rides off-road, how it articulates over obstacles, and then how it also drives on-road. Absolutely, definitely. Ride on-road and performance off-road will certainly be enhanced when you go long arm. You know, the, the big drawback is budget because you're going to be, the system is going to cost more and there's going to be more labor involved to put it in the vehicle. So it, it is. I mean, it's, um, I mean, it's a few days. Like you're, you, so to go long arm, one of the cons to it is you are chopping off every factory bracket. Yep, and there is no returning. And, there and, there's, no, and that's the other drawback yep. is there's no return. Once you cut all that off, you can't go, you can't, you're not going to go back to mid arm and, and, and go to uh, your dealership and say, hey, I need this. I need this frame bracket. Like, I guess the only yeah. return would be buying a new frame. I, exactly. You'd have to start yep. over and buy a new I frame. Mean, and then you could always change go. long arm systems to different geometry that felt as your vehicle's needs change, you change. Right. But then again, you're still cutting everything you just put back on. So the labor is still going to be there. Right. Um, and it sounds scary. And it's, I mean, it's really not. It's literally just cutting no. brackets off, welding new brackets yep. on. It's a bit more involved, but it's, it's nothing it, to be scared no, of. No, there's, there's, there's no reason to be scared. Again, you got to pick what, what's going to fit your application. You know, pick the geometry and pick what you want to, to get out of your vehicle. Right. Um, as far as the rules of thumbs are concerned on when you start to look at long arm, you know, you're, what happens is as you get taller, you're, you know, at a stock height, your control arm's nice and level, the axle moves up and down, everything functions very nicely. As you start adding lift height, your control arm angles start getting steeper. So as you hit a bump, you have energy going in this direction. You have a component in the vertical and the longitudinal. So as you get steeper on this angle and more and more lift height, you're putting more into the chassis, creating a rougher and rougher ride. So once you increase that arm length, you're gonna be leveling this back out, reducing the angle in the arm. It'll feel better on the street. And also, if you look at it from a given point, let's say this is your frame, this is your axle connection, this is now rotating forward and aft quite a bit, right. which is called the steering effect of an axle. So the longer the radius or the longer the control arm, the less that happens as your suspension right. cycles so, off-road. So as your other side's coming up, that side's coming down, it's pulling that tire back Absolutely. and it's actually steering you. Now it's now it's rotating on a pivot like this and it's That's it's moving much more linear. Vertical. Yeah. Exactly. So everything gets smoother, you know, and again, it's based on budget, time, and what geometry fits you best. Right. Now, I mean, so if you know you're going to get into it, you know you're going to start lifting it, and you do have the budget for it, I mean, it's kind of one of those things like instead of buying a lift and buying all the mid arms and going through it and then and then buy, having to do it all over right. again. I mean, it's really not a bad idea if you know you're going to be using it, you know you're going to keep the vehicle for a while and Absolutely. And, and be enjoying it um, to kind of do it right from the beginning. And it's definitely, you know, it is a good investment. Typically, you're going to get more robust control arm mounts for the uh, frame side for sure. 
Um, I've seen some stuff will, ripped off on trailers. Exactly. Yeah. Some will be axle brackets included, which will be stronger than what comes from the factory as well. So there's definitely a lot of pros to it. It's just whether or not it fits your budget, fits your needs at the time. Right. So the factory, um, they're always having to save weight where they can. I know my brackets on the front were cut and, and, and starting to rip. I could just weld it back up, but we were at the point that I put the thing through so much abuse. Yep. I probably should have gone this way quite a while ago yep. um, for my for my use for your way, use yeah for what I've been doing. Um, but I've I was just trying to stay as factory component as possible Absolutely. to see what it would do. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's we can get into everything uh, deeper in the, in the advanced course. in the advanced course. Yep. So head on over there, check that yep. out. So I hope this just kind of gives you a quick. Uh, when, where, and why. Yeah, when, where, and why. And then we can kind of touch base on a three link, which we're also doing. Yep, yep. And then a four, so four link, and then there's a triangulated four link. Yep. And, so then, there's, yeah, and then a double triangulated four link. Absolutely. And, okay. And, and, and <laughs> so. Some people call, call it a typical arrangement of four link, but it's actually a five link four link with a track bar. Okay. Or a independent three link with a track bar or rear four link with a track bar or triangulated four link, double triangulated four link. And so. what's associated with making those modifications. So there's there's a lot there. Like if you're really wanting to kind of nerd out and oh, yeah. start learning and, and, and just reading up on all that stuff, again, our advanced courses. And then what oh. we're doing with ours is we're taking ours from uh, the factory mid-arm four link with a track bar. Yep. And we're going to be a three link. And that's going to mean that we're going to have two lower control arms. Yep. And then one center, center on the top. Yep. So we're getting rid of, yeah, so we're not going to be a box anymore. Correct. It'll be a triangle. We, we're removing <laughs> the natural But we're still going to have a track bar. Absolutely. And keep a factory style roll center. And keep a factory style roll center. Now, if we're real quick, if we get into four link um, or triangulated four link. Triangulated four link, yep. And that's going to be where your uppers are. Triangulate. So you have no track bar in the back. Okay, so that gets rid of your track bar. It gets rid bar. of your track bar, so your axle keeps itself maintained center just based on physical geometry of the upper and lower control arms themselves. And so that just gives you one less like binding point. Absolutely. Or one, so the, in, the independent three link with the track bar, the triangulated four link and the double triangulated four link have no natural binding points. It's basically going back to the basics of suspension or basics of geometry that you learned in your freshman year of high school. You know, it just allows it to move. How many points does it take to constrain a plane? The, the optimum is three. Anything more than three, you now start dealing with uh, bind or distortion of components. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, thanks, guys. I hope you learned a little bit about the long arms, three links, yes. triangular four links. At least, of options. At least putting that in your mind and stuff to think about, especially if you want to kind of start to do a really cool build right yep. from the beginning and not having to do it two or three times. But thanks for joining us, and we'll see you over in the advanced.